celebrations. Our opening song, Companions on the Journey, expresses the true sense of our years here at St. Mary's. We are companions. Companions with our friends. Companions with our teachers. Companions with our parents. And most of all, companions with Christ. We are called. We are children. We are Christ for one another. Please pray with us this evening as we celebrate our graduation that we continue to entrust all our future moments to our true companion, our God.
have with us uh, our neighboring pastors. On my right is Father Amber, a holy name. And uh, Father Abanko, he came all the way from Mountaintop. He is going to give the graduation address later on. On my left, uh, my senior Ray from uh, St. Francis, Father Amber from St. Joseph's, that's St. Joseph's Maluka. So uh, we want to take this occasion to uh, offer congratulations and our sincere thanks, congratulations to our graduates and their parents, your good parents who made many sacrifices for your sons and daughters to bring them to this happy occasion tonight. And uh, we wouldn't be here at all if it weren't for the wonderful faculty we have. Uh, Sister Marie Collette as our principal, and all of the teachers who have helped these young men and women, uh, mostly from first grade or younger to the uh, peak that they have reached tonight. So we have a lot to celebrate, and we do it by thanking God first of all, and then each and every one of you will thank parents, relatives, and all who have helped us achieve the uh, celebration we are having. So let us begin in Paul joining the prayers of the Mass in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Our brothers and sisters, if we dare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God.
He will keep you safe from all hidden dangers and from deadly diseases. He will cover you with his wings. You will be safe in his care. His faithfulness will protect and defend you. You may not fear any dangers at night or sudden attacks during the day or plagues that strike in the dark or the evils that kill in the daylight. Matthew. 
You are like light for the whole world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a bushel. Instead, he puts it on a lampstand, where it gives light for everyone in the house to see. In the same way, your light must shine before people, so that they will see the good things that you do and praise your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord.
Now, what did Jeremiah say when God said all that to him? He said, forget it, God. I'm too young. I know that there are some of you that are sitting here that say you're too young. And you're not ready maybe, to say the things you want to. But I also know that there's some of you here that are saying, I'm old enough to say no to God or to say no to some of the things that I learned at St. Mary's or some of the things that my parents want me to do. But you know what? It's that exciting tension that exists between sometimes you feeling too young and sometimes you feeling like you're old enough to know better. It's that tension that collapses that exists that you're going to really begin to explore as you go to high school. It's that tension that gives you energy to start really saying yes and saying the things that you feel are in your heart and that God wants you to say. The only thing that comforted Jeremiah down in the reading is when he said this. God said to Jeremiah, I'll be with you. Don't worry. Now I have a really tough question for all of you. And I'd like you to answer it by raising your hand. How many of you in the class of 1996 in St. Mary's feel that God is with you? I'm glad you raised your hand because if you did, I'd be in deep trouble. My senior to move through me down here wondering what's been going on in the school, and all the teachers will be shaking their heads, and the parents will be really shaking their heads. I believe that you just didn't do that because it was the thing to do. I think all of you in the deep depths of your heart know that God is with you. But how do you know that God is with you? Well, that's where I'd like to take a quick look at the gospel to kind of bring all this together. And there's a great image in the gospel. There's a great image about light. Where Jesus says all of us have to be a light for everybody to see. It's an image that goes along with all of us having something important to say. To say it loud enough and to show it in our actions loud enough that everybody sees it. Boy, I brought a little book of matches to help us understand this. You see, all of you are like this match. You've spent eight years really being formed in Catholic school and learning from your parents and your friends, learning the things that you need to say. You've learned that God is with you. You know that you have a potential, a potential to act a certain way and to say certain things. You see, that potential is always going to be with you. Wherever you go to high school, wherever you end up working, whoever you end up spending your life with, that potential is God. You may not know that or recognize it right now, but the potential that you will always have with you is God. Just like this match always has a potential of being a light, the light that Jesus talks about in the gospel, so that everybody can hear what you have to say and see what you are doing as a Christian. Now, it's interesting. The choice is yours. You can take what you've learned in these eight years here at St. Mary's and really remain on it like this. Or you can take that potential that you have God being with you all the time. And you could be lit. Now did you ever notice what happens when you light a match? One of the things is that when you light the match, you can kind of be looking around and talking and then you notice it again. And you notice it's getting pretty close to your fingers, so you have a choice to make. Are you going to let it go so far? Or are you going to get afraid and shake it and blow it out? Well, that's really what's going to happen with God in your lives. You're going to be this light, and you're lit now because of your experience here, because you were graduating. But there are going to be times when you're going to get afraid. You're going to get a little stressed out. You're going to get a little anxious because maybe that light burning a little too bright, and you don't know if you can quite handle it. You don't know if you really believe or you can do what God's asking you to do. So you're going to get nervous, and you're going to shake it out. When that happens, you're going to have to make sure that you can turn to somebody else. Or that you can find it in the depth of your being to find another light, to find another match. Did you ever notice what else happens when you light a match? If I were to hold it like this, to kind of move along here because I know everybody's hot. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to worry if it's going to burn my fingers. And you know what? Sometimes you let it go just enough 
to burn containers. Sometimes you're going to get burnt to life. You're going to be shining out there with your faith, and you're going to be feeling really good about yourself, and that light's going to be burning brighter like that match is getting brighter and brighter, and all of a sudden, you're going to get hurt, and you're going to get burned, and you're going to shake it off, and you're going to have a scar. That's what happens when you get older. But you have a choice to kind of bury yourself in other ways and not try and take another match to light your way again, or you can really take that match and get through that hurt, turn to people, pray to God, and let people help you get your life back. Now look at that. I could have, that could have worked any better. Because sometimes you're going to be a light for a lot of people, and then all of a sudden, somebody's going to blow it out. Or maybe you yourself are going to make a conscious effort to blow it out. That's what we call sin. And we all know we do that. When we know that we consciously blew the light of Jesus out in our lives, we're going to have to find some healing. We're going to have to come and experience a sacrament of reconciliation to get us back on track. We're going to have to know that God forgives us. We're going to have to know that we have to forgive ourselves or we're really not going to understand God forgiving us. We're going to have to know that when we consciously sin sometimes, we need to seek help so that we can get that light back and we can be forgiven. Those are the images I'd like to leave with you. I'd like you to really think about Jeremiah, that all of you, God knew you before you were born. God dedicated you when you were baptized in your parents' home. You really were appointed by God when you said yes in confirmation to live out a Christian life. After eight years, Catholic education, and your own life experience in your family, your light is shining brightly. And all of everybody in this church, the people that know you can see that light. Your faith is alive. But we also know that tomorrow's going to come. And the next four years of high school and college and wherever you may be, for all those things I talked about, you may get blown out. You may get hurt. You may let it burn a little too much and you don't know when to stop or when to go forward. Make sure that you always know what God told you in mind. I am with you. You always have the potential. You always have God to be that life for others. And so our prayer for you as you take the next step in your life is to be the prophet. Say what you want to say. To act. To be the Christian. Show the actions that you have learned. And may you always shine as the light that you are.
My brethren, and our sacrifice would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Father of mercy, in your great love for us, you have given us your only Son, and we can make you take us up him with his own perfect sacrifice, that we may offer you fitting worship. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other now a sign of Christ's peace.
for having completed in a satisfactory manner the course of study prescribed by St. Mary of the Assumption School, Scranton, Pennsylvania, and approved by the proper authorities of the Diocese of Scranton, the following students are awarded diplomas. We ask that you please hold all applause until the, the diplomas are distributed. Lauren Andrews. <coughs> April Brennan, Diane Serba, Mary Ann Swalinski, Mary Lynn Delfino, Jamie Fry. Aaron Galing, Gina Grachowski, <coughs> Stacy Carney, Megan Langan, Melissa Lanick. Sarah McHale, <coughs> Michelle Pendrack, Nicole Ritabek, Melissa Rossi, Sarah Snyder, Roxanne Walsh, Amy Wachowski. <coughs> Clinton Gilman, Mark Priskevich, Michael Lenity. Michael Mariani, Timothy Masqua, Christopher Musso, Thomas Notary, Colin O'Boyle, Patrick Scanlon, <laughs> Anthony Slavinsky, Martin Snyder, John Pierre. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly present to you the graduating class of 19.
Alano Royal.
Jay-Z. <laughs> 
Timlin Youth Lay Ministry Award is presented to the following students, Sarah Snyder and Roxanne Walker.
Stacy Carney. means to me. Faith, knowledge, teachers, friends, and memories are what Catholic education means to me. It is learning not only reading, writing, and arithmetic, but also it is learning about our world and the challenges our faith presents to us every day. It is something unique with memories and experiences that I will reflect on the rest of my life. Many years ago, there were many Catholic schools around, from grade schools to high schools and colleges. That number has decreased a lot, partly due to lack of money. Even today, schools are in debt, but they don't let it interfere with excellence and pride that comes with the Catholic education. I find that my six years of Catholic schooling has been great. There are so many things that I never would have learned if it weren't for it. God is just one. Of course, we all know God, but do we know about our faith and living a Christian life? In third grade, I did it. But over the years, I've come to understand better what God expects of me. This is just one of the many things I've learned, and I will take these lessons with me as I move on in life. Another thing I can see with Catholic education is that we have excellent teachers who are dedicated to providing service to God. They teach us what we need to know and are there for us when we need advice. No amount of work could ever repay our teachers for the tireless effort they have given throughout the years. Friendship is another great thing about going to a Catholic school. If you went to a public school, you would have a variety of people to choose your friends from, but you wouldn't know everyone personally. Here, there's 30 of us, and we are a tight-knit group. Going our separate ways through high school is going to be hard and very emotional, because some of us have been together for eight years or more. This is definitely one difference between public and Catholic school. Memories that last a lifetime is a slogan for Pennsylvania, but it could also be for Catholic education. There are many lessons and experiences that we will cherish forever. Things we have learned about our faith will never be forgotten, along with all the fun we've had with our classmates on class trips and in school. If I didn't carry these things with me, I'd feel lost. 
I'd like to conclude by saying that Catholic education is the best education you can get. In my opinion, it's the most well-rounded education, and to me, number one. It truly means the world to me. There are no words strong enough to say how much I love God and the education he is bestowing on me. And now, a final thought for my classmates. This is not the end, it's just the start of a new beginning. Please join us in our closing song, Beautiful. <laughs>